If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris. Johnny presents the Milton Bull Show. <laughs> Here comes Johnny, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny on the spot for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris. Yes, they'd all. Oh, Philip Morris! On Radio City, New York, here is the Milton Burrow Show. With Kurt Kelton, Jack Alderson, Arnold Stang, Mary Ship, Jack Hartley, our singing star Dick Farney, the music of Ray Block and his orchestra, and your truly Frank Allen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we salute the great automobile industry, proud makers of Buick, Plymouth, Studebaker. In keeping with the spirit, our star Milton Berle will now spend the next half hour making a gnash of himself. <laughs> and here he is, Milton Berle. in fine diction tonight, Mr. Gallup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Automobiles, Mr. Gallup. You remember when we used to sing, Come along with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. Today they sing, Stay at home with me, dear Evie. I'm on the waiting list for a Chevy. <laughs> I, I, I could have said, I look sharp as any razor in my brand new Kaiser Fraser. <laughs> I could have said that, but I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> oh, come now, Bill. People are getting new cars. Yes, they are getting new. You're right, Mr. Gallup. My brother, Frank. You know Frank? Yes, indeed. No grand way. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Three grand every week. <laughs> um, <laughs> My brother Frank, my, he just got a new car, a new 1947 reconvertible coupe. Reconvertible coupe? You mean uh, convertible? No, I mean, re <laughs> I mean, I mean revertible. This is going to louse up the joke now, what I just said. <laughs> no, I, I mean revertible, because at the end of the month, it reverts back to the finance company. <laughs> You get it, Mr. Gallup? You see, you said revertible, and I said reconvertible, and it reverts back to the... Burl, Burl, if you ever again make me a party to a joke like that, I'll roll up this script and flog you with it. Mr. Gallup! You'll give me another straight line like that, and I'll pull out your tongue and braid it around your nose. Well, Mr. Gallup, well, you should know by now that in order for me to tell a joke, I, I, I need a stooge. A stooge? Yes. I, Frank Gallup, a stooge. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. I, I, who was the music commentator for the great Toscanini. Well, Mr. Gallup. I, who was once asked by Asha Heifetz to hold his rosin. <laughs> But please, Mr. Gallup. I, the wearer of the Andre Costellanis belt for faithful service to music. But, Mr. Gallup, I... I, a stooge for Milton Burl. Mr. Gallup, I... Quiet, peasant. <laughs> yes, Mr. Gallup, sir. Uh, mind you, Burl, right. I don't mind an occasional exchange of quips, as I'm rather good at that sort of thing. I know you are, Mr. Gallup. However, in the future, when we engage in a bit of horse play, allow me to choose which part of the horse I'm going to play. <laughs> But, Mr. Gallup, you don't understand. I'm supposed to be the star. Allegedly, yes. <laughs> so let us settle it once and for all. Henceforth, all serious matters will be handled by me. All right. And let's leave the comedy to Bob Hope. Mr. Gallup! <laughs> Mr. Gallup, you, you've hurt me. Hurt me. Deeply. Painfully and mortally. Come, girl, let's not slobber. <laughs> Oh, sure, that's the popular sport now to make insulting jokes about Milton Burrow. Go ahead. But let me tell you one thing. I remember every one of those insulting jokes. I use them all later. <laughs> well, if you've quite finished with this revolting display of self-pity, let us get on with our subject, the automobile industry. But, Mr. Gallup, why, why such a depressing subject? Customers fighting with auto dealers, long waiting lists, high prices. True, Burl. That's why tonight we're taking our listeners back to happier days. Oh, yes, it was just a few years ago when all you had to do was walk into any automobile dealer's showroom, and this is what would happen. Well, 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 
well, well, well. <laughs> Mr. Burl, so you've come in to buy one of our new cars. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burl, just look at this model. Sixteen cylinders, mother of pearl spark plugs. Seat covers by Hattie Carnegie. Fourteen carat piston rings. Chippendale rear view mirror and a tail from an unborn mink for the radiator cap. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burl, this car is just for you. Take it, please. Uh, maybe. Oh, but Mr. Burl, look at that car. Mm. Get behind the wheel. Mm. Drive it around for a couple of years. If you like it, if you like it send us a little something each month. If you don't like it, just dump it somewhere on the street. We'll pick it up later. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Burl, say yes. Well, I don't know about that radiator cap, that bronze bust of the president of General Motors signing with the United Auto Workers. <laughs> you don't like it? No, I don't. There. We'll replace it with the head of one of our vice presidents. Mm. In gold? No, the real head. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burl. Have a heart. Buy it. Well, uh, when can I have delivery? In 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes. What's the matter? Another strike? I... <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, <clears throat> what's the price? Well, well, the, the list price is $500. The list price? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get out of this clip joint. Oh. <laughs> well, wait, Mr. Bell, wait. Naturally, we'll give you a liberal allowance on your old car. Oh, you will, huh? Yes. Let me see. That's my car in the front, that 1922 Essex. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll give you three hundred dollars of it. Three hundred? Yes. That's the big Grover Cleveland model. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see. It is in good condition. It has a tire. <laughs> I'll give you six hundred. Okay. Oh, Mr. Burl, you'll never regret it. Now let's see. Five hundred for the new car, six hundred allowance for your old car. Here you are. A check for a hundred dollars, and here are the keys to your new car. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burl. Come in again, please. There I go again. No sales resistance. <laughs> Yes, those were wonderful days. Well, now let us observe Milton Burl going in to see the same dealer about a new car today. Uh, excuse me, my name is Burl. Remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see that table there, don't you? I want to see $300 under it before I even look at you. <laughs> Yes, sir. There it is. Now, I've been on the list since... Shut up! Yes. The price is $10,000. $10,000? Yes. That's the list price. There's got to be a little extra in it for me. Wait a minute. I gave you $300 under the table. That was for the table. It's yours. Take it off. <laughs> but I... Shut up! The way... When can I have delivery? How old are you? 35. You'll never make it. <laughs> But I, I... Look, forget about it. I got a beautiful used car for you. Just $1,000 and it's yours. Well, it's a deal. Here's the money. Where's the car? There it is. A 1922 Essex. <laughs> See, my old big Grover Cleveland model. It's just what I've wanted. Thank you. Thank you. Shut up! <laughs> Yes, Mr. Gallup, those were the wonderful days when you took new cars for granted. When in your shiny new car with that one and only girl, you snuggled up to her and you sang, Give me the road, the white winding highway. Just let me see the unbeaten byway, and I'll travel along, singing a vagabond song. Ah, uh, Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia. Golden memories. Golden memories of Cynthia. I'll tell you when to laugh, lady. Please. <laughs> In my heart, there is always still that picture of you, Cynthia, speeding down the highway. The top of the car would be down. The flap of the car would be open. And the owner of the car would be chasing you. <laughs> On the open road, hitchhiking with Cynthia. Remember that day, Cynthia, when no one would stop for us. You lifted your skirt and you held your leg out on the highway. That stopped the cars for miles. They thought it was a fallen tree. <laughs> poor, poor nearsighted Cynthia. Remember how you'd stick your head out of the car window to read the Burma shave sign? Then one day you stuck your head out too far. Boing, boing, boing. 
Getting smacked, getting smacked by those signs gave you a smart, stylish look. A sort of off-the-face face. But it was Cynthia's driving that made me love her. What a road hog you are, Cynthia. Used to keep an apple in your mouth. Used to keep an apple in your mouth. <laughs> Throw that gag in a writer's mouth. But it was a little thing. <laughs> I don't think it'll fit. They got too many old ones in there now. <laughs> but <laughs> ah, but it was the little things I remember about you, Cynthia. Your tinkling little laugh whenever they catch you filing the engine numbers off of hot cars. <laughs> Those tired little lines that would appear around your mouth after a hard night of siphoning gas out of parked cars. <laughs> yes, Cynthia, all of your life you were crazy about cars. I guess that's why you turned out to be such an old crank. <laughs> but as for me, <laughs> I'll travel alone, singing a vagabond None of that. No applause, please. No applause. <laughs> now you see what'll happen. You, you'll call NBC's attention to the fact that I'm on their network. You see? <laughs> and it makes them see red. Network. I made it up. Joke. <laughs> oh, I'm cooked. If they ever find out, I'm cooked. Burl. You know, I'm cooked if... Oh, that's your line. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's Burl, I say, uh, tonight, let us take our listeners behind the scenes of the great automobile industry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll think about it, Jeff. <laughs> well, <laughs> what have you got to say next? If we do. Yes? If well, we do. I say we don't want to. <laughs> and what have you got to read next? Uh, <laughs> I'm in that mood for Mr. Gallagher. There will be no fun in the studio. Let's, this is between you and me. Did you hear that applause just then? <laughs> that was Ray Block trying to keep himself awake, I think. <laughs> you say that you want to take the listeners behind the scenes of the great automobile industry? No. <laughs> well, I've got an idea, Mr. Gallup. I've got an idea. You know who... You know, being that we're, our whole subject, uh, our automobiles, you know who I'm going to be tonight? Who? Walter P. Burrow. Oh. <laughs> he's that great automotive. Yes, yes. Uh, he's the automotive industry man, yes. the head of that great auto corporation. And what are you doing? I'm addressing my board of governors. Oh. Gentlemen, I am proud to announce that the new 1947 Burl 8 is on the market. Uh, hurrah, hurrah. hurrah. <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have to do something about our salesmanship now. Every one of us has got to get out there and push the new Burl 8. That's the only way it'll go. <laughs> and don't worry, gentlemen, we have a new gadget that will revolutionize the auto industry. What's the new gadget, boss? What's the new gadget, boy? <laughs> go find out for yourself. I'm busy. I have to put Johnny on the spot. Tell me, Johnny, why is Philip Morris so much better to smoke? Here's your answer, sir. It's because the Philip Morris smoker really gets what other smokers only hope to get. Right, Johnny. Philip Morris is the one leading cigarette with an exclusive difference in manufacture. The only leading cigarette scientifically proved far less irritating to the nose and throat. Remember, less irritation means more enjoyment. That's why the Philip Morris smoker really gets what other smokers only hope to get. Better taste. Finer flavor, perfect smoking pleasure. Um, doesn't every smoker know that? No. Oh. <laughs> if every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. For perfect smoking pleasure, try a pack of Philip Morris today. <laughs> That was my heart as a hobo. <laughs> Arrangements by Flash Gordon. <laughs> that was Ray Block, the Phil Mars Orchestra. And Ray, your music uh, and your orchestra as well. Your playing can be summed up in two words. More rehearsals. And now... 
as we continue our salute to the great automotive industry, we now present... Automobile Forum tonight. Automobile Forum tonight. The question, do you close the new Studebaker with a door or a cork? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, and now you're back on Prudential, and now let us, let us proceed with the questions about automobiles. Let's start with this gentleman opening the bottle of beer with his teeth. Uh, yes, sir? Mr. Burrell, I'm tired of the same old wreck, year in and year out. The same old wreck? On the street, people always point and say, look at that old heap. Then why don't you get rid of the old heap? I'd like to, but she won't give me a divorce. <laughs> Thank you. Let's move on. All right, this young man wearing the chintz knickers. Uh, young man, uh, what, is, uh, what is your name? My name is Lady Esther. <laughs> Lady Esther? Yeah, but I'm not the real Lady Esther. <laughs> oh, you're not? No, the real one got a deeper voice. Oh, that's true. <laughs> My father gave me the name Lady Esther because he said I belong in a jar. <laughs> I see. Before I changed my name to Lady Esther, I had a boy's name. A boy's name? What was it? Lady Mendel. <laughs> All right, Lady Esther, you have something to say about the new automobiles? Yeah, but I don't feel like talking right now. Well, if you talk... I'm a funny guy. If I don't feel like talking, I don't talk. Yeah, but when... Nobody can make me talk either. Did you hear about it? I know that, Stop but... Stop nagging me. I'm telling you, my lips are sealed. All right, but... I'm a citizen. You can't make me talk if you burn my feet with candles. Look, we're trying... I'm a citizen. You can't make me talk even if you miss the district of Yeah, but we're trying... I'm a citizen. You can't make me talk if you beat me. Torture me. Throw me in solitary. Please, you... Go on, hit me. You're screaming for my blood, but I ain't talking. <laughs> Let us not create a disturbance. Young man, if you have a question, let's hear it. Okay. Would you like to tweeze my eyebrows? <laughs> oh, please. Let's get on to the ladies. All right, this lady in the aisle shaking paprika on the frog's legs. Um, young lady, what is your name, please? Tallulah so, Feeney. I'm a homemaker. I see. And you have a question? Yeah, how can I stop my husband from tinkering with cars? Your husband likes to tinker? He's the biggest tinker in the neighborhood. <laughs> Really? He likes to take cars apart. Once he took a car apart in 30 seconds. 30 seconds? He must have had help. Yeah, from a telephone pole. <laughs> I see what you mean. What a picture he makes every Saturday, rolling down the highway. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I got to sober him up and help him back in the car. <laughs> I understand. Him and his fancy driving. You should see how he can stop on a dime. For doing that, they threw him in jail. They threw him in jail for stopping on a dime? Yeah, the dime was in a pedestrian's pocket. <laughs> Oh, gee, that's terrible. You should see them gadgets for the car. He even got a raccoon tail. It's amazing. <laughs> What's amazing about having a raccoon tail? Growing out of them. Oh. Oh, that's different. Whenever I'm with him, he drives with one hand. It's insulting. That's romantic. What's insulting about your husband driving with one hand? What's insulting? The other hand he keeps on his wallet. That did it. Thank you. the most appropriate closing to our automobile forum, let us all join together and sing. There are cars that look so snappy. There are cars that never go. There's a car to suit the speedy driver. There's one for the Sunday driving snow. There are cars of every make and color. Jalopies and reconverted cans. Are the ones we sell to the smiling Irishman. Schmans. Schmans, Schmans, Schmans. I love those automobile songs. Don't you like those yes. automobile songs? Mr. Gallup, yes. I know everything about automobiles. I really do. Well, I'm sure that you've uh, had some experience that you'd like to tell us about. Yes, I would love to tell you about. Mr. Gallup, one summer I decided to take the family on a motoring trip up to Canada. So the night before, we were all packing, and I'll never forget. <laughs> Darling, will you hurry up and finish packing? We've got to get to bed early. We're getting up at six. Relax, Milton. Yeah, take it easy, Pop. You'll last longer. <laughs> 
darling. This is awful. I, I was through packing, packing two hours ago. I'm packing. A toothbrush and a racing form. Quiet. It's just a camping trip up north. Yeah, but a racing form. What are you going to bet on, moose? Quiet. <laughs> Junior, we're going up to the Canadian woods. Wait a minute. What's the idea of packing your new sailor suit? Well, I might run into one of the own sisters. They're just my age, you know. <laughs> Did you hear, Junior, darling? He has romance at his age. He got that from me. I wish he'd give it back to you. You could use it. <laughs> it's very funny. Come on, darling. Let's go to bed. I'll turn out the lights, dear. Oh, all right, Milton. Good night, Junior. Oh, no. That knock. That must be Sam Harrison and his wife, Martha. If that corny windbag gets his foot in the door... Now, Milton, they're neighbors. Be nice. I'll brush them off. Come in. Well, howdy doody do da do. <laughs> hello, Sam. Uh, hello, Martha. Well, saw your jalopy outside, all packed for a trip. So I said, there goes the girls off on a nice long trip, and we haven't even said goodbye. Let's drop over. Isn't that what I said, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Awfully nice of you, Sam. Yep. Uh, we're leaving for Canada in the morning. Canada? Yeah. Well, the minute I saw those sleeping bags on the front bumper, I said, they're going to Canada. Didn't I, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Look, uh, folks, we're, we're getting up at six in the morning, Sam, so we're all about to get ready. Oh, oh there's nothing like an early start. <laughs> Reminds me of the time Martha and I drove up to Albany for his sister's wedding. Sam, it's late, please. Ah, it's a very swell story, Milt. Little long, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> Some other time, Sam. Thanks very much for dropping in. Tell us, Sam, what happened on your trip to Albany? <laughs> Junior, how many times have I told you to keep quiet when adults are talking? Well, Milt, we all went to bed early. <laughs> and you know, we were in the sack ten minutes when the telephone rings. It was the gas company. <laughs> No, wait. Say, Mother. Yes? Was it the gas company? Yes. <laughs> All right. It was the gas company. Now, look, Sam. Well, Sam, ten minutes later. <laughs> a phone call. Yes, Sam. <laughs> so, here I am. Here I am. Parked outside a filling station, waiting for Martha to come out. <laughs> uh, Milton, you're not listening. Uh, Milton, wake up. I, well, who deals? Who deals? Sam. Sam, look at the clock. It's two in the morning. Well, so long, Milton. Nice seeing you. Wasn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, Martha. Oh, brother. Quick, darling, let's get to bed. No, no, please. Sam! Canada, Canada, you know, it just dawned on me you're going to Canada. Martha and I took a trip to Canada ten years ago. Didn't we, Martha? Yes. Sam, <laughs> please, it's just a camping trip. A camping trip, did yes, you say? Yes, Well, look what happened to us. Martha was almost attacked by a bear. Uh, weren't you, dear? Yes. <laughs> what did she do, talk her way out of it? <laughs> Sam, please. And that's not all. Oh, no. Martha accidentally put some poison ivy in a mixed green salad. Mm. Why, you should have seen my mouth. For three whole days, I couldn't talk. Isn't that right, Martha? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam, please. Milton, look. Why don't you go to Atlantic City? Sam. Oh, Atlantic City. That's where little Martha and I spent our honeymoon. Isn't it, dear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Atlantic City. That saltwater cabbie for breakfast. Sam. Uh, look, look, we'd better run along. Sam. <laughs> yes. Sam. Well, see you in Atlantic City. Uh, Atlantic City? At this time of the year? Gone. By the place for you, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Gone. Oh, Swimming in that sulfur. Go home. Makes you a new man. Go to Canada. Lazy afternoons 
in the steam room go to hot springs of course if you don't like southern cooking there's always niagara falls go to hey pop watch that driving wake up all right go ahead Uh, That morning air. uh, Are you sure this is the way to Niagara Falls, Sam? Well, this is the way we always go, hey, Martha? Yes. (laughs) Oh, it is nice now, too. Sam. That rolling surf. Go on. Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment. Ready or not? And in the meantime, here is Mr. Gallup with two words. Philip Morris is the only leading cigarette scientifically proved far less irritating to the nose and throat. Remember, less irritation means more enjoyment. That's why the Philip Morris smoker really gets what other smokers only hope to get. Better taste, finer flavor, perfect smoking pleasure. Yes, it's true. If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know... They'd all change to Philip Morris. Made in America by Americans to please American tastes. Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. Saving time ends in certain areas on September 28th. This may change the time at which the Milton Berle Show is heard in your community. Please check your local newspaper for the time at which this program will be heard next Tuesday and each Tuesday thereafter. Thank you very much, Mr. Gallup. And while you're mentioning things, would you mention that starting tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm appearing in person at the Roxy Theater here in New York? No. (laughs) Well, you won't even mention that I'm funnier than ever and that I have some new jokes? No. Fine cooperation. As far as you're concerned, I could drop dead. Yes. (laughs) Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. This is Johnny again, returning now to the thousands of store windows and counters all over America. Look for me. I'll be waiting for you. Come in and go. If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. And now, goodbye, Johnny. See you next Tuesday, same station, when Philip Morris will again present the Milton Berle Show. Until then... Hello, hello, testing one, two, three, four, five. That's it, five. Pipe smokers, try Revelation Pipe Tobacco, a smooth blend of five tobaccos. Yes, relax, take five, take Revelation, a fine pipe tobacco. The Milton Bell Show was written by Matt Hyken and Alan Rubin. This is Frank Gallup saying goodnight for Philip Mollett. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.